welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene, Psoriasis Unmasked, part four, what are my treatment options in the management of psoriatic disease? Okay, so I wanna talk about uh, various treatment options because over the years of having psoriasis, I realized there sometimes is a need to use multiple uh, treatments in order to really ad address the symptoms and signs of psoriatic disease. So my history uh, of trying, I think, everything under the sun back in the day, I did my Western medicine, which was my cortisone, UV, uh, tar baths, paraffin, methotrexate, and hospitalized twice, so having intense treatments in that time. Then I did herbal medicine, homeopathy, uh, allergy testing and desensitization, both with liquid and injections, uh, vitamin IVs, vitamin therapy, what else? Kinesiology, obviously probiotics and gut health, and the list goes on. So there is a quite a lot of things there, and each of them are really utilized one at a time. I didn't combine them, and uh, some of them, for instance, kinesiology, you wouldn't really expect to see great resolution on that on its own. It's really something that works well with, say, a herbal medicine, something to take the inflammation out of the skin. But before I go into all these treatments, it's really important how to, to understand how psoriatic disease manifests. So for psoriasis, we have the triggers. So in previous uh, videos, I've said to you about identifying what irritates your skin, what triggers causing more inflammation in your body. When you identify these triggers, these triggers cause inflammation in the body. The immune cells in the skin react to the inflammation and so they will cause the skin cells to shed every four days versus every 28 days. And so when we're getting a shedding of the skin every four days, essentially what happens is psoriasis forms. When we're talking about psoriatic arthritis, again, we've got the triggers causing inflammation in the joints, the immune system's reacting to that inflammation in the joints, and you have swelling and pain and discomfort in those joints. So it's very important when you're looking for someone or a modality of health to help you with your uh, condition to identify someone who's very experienced in the space of psoriatic disease because it is a very complicated issue it's a systemic issue and so they need to really identify what uh, collectively needs to be done to get you well and this won't be a quick process it won't be you know a few months it, you know it's years. I, I'm still working on figuring stuff out. And, you know, I would say my skin's pretty good. It's not 100% perfect, but it's a, it's a heck of a lot more um, important and, and, well, not important, but um, healthier than what it used to be. So it's, it's important to identify someone who's experienced because I've used some of those modalities and I feel that those um, modalities weren't necessarily bad, but they just didn't help me because perhaps the person wasn't experienced to treat something as severe as my psoriasis. So the next thing is, is my personal opinion is that we treat the inflammation and not the immune response. The immune response is a natural response to the presence of inflammation. If we suppress the immune system and not do anything to uh, remove triggers and reduce the inflammation in the body, essentially that just keeps bubbling underneath the surface and these immunosuppressant treatments start to um, you know, become effect, ineffective. So where they might have been effective initially, because the inflammation just keeps building and building, these uh, medications start to be ineffective and then you go to the stronger and stronger and stronger ones without actually addressing the main problem, which is your triggers and your inflammation. And the last thing is, is that sometimes you might need more than one therapy. So after I had my son, I had a flare up because I had an epidural, I had an episiotomy, which meant I was given strong painkillers. I hadn't had any sleep, obviously having a newborn, you're not sleeping. Um, hormonal changes that were um, occurring after I had my son. And I would say within, was it a month after I had full body coverage? Like I hadn't been that bad for 20 something years. It literally took me back to when I was a kid. It took me back to the fear. I, I was completely overwhelmed, even though I had thought I had all my little, you know, 
uh, treasure chest of things to do. But the problem was because I was breastfeeding, a lot of those things I couldn't do. For instance, I can't take my herbs. Herbs are very bitter and very cold, not ideal for babies because obviously that comes through the breast milk. And so you don't want to put that sort of medicine unless the baby has a skin problem. Um, you don't want to give that to the baby. Uh, what's the other things? Um, the topical creams I couldn't use because I had lots of essential oils. And again, they were like, when you're pregnant, breastfeeding is no research, so we best avoid it. So all these things that I had, you know, worked out over 20, 30 years, suddenly were literally ripped away from me, which sent me into a huge spin and got you know, extraordinarily depressed. And my maternal health nurse was like, oh, I'm worried you've got PND. And I said, it's not PND, PND. it's really just the fact that uh, my skin's flared up and I, everything I've used in the past, I can't do. And she had said to me, well, what, what, can, what can you do? And I'll see if, if I can help. And I said, well, I really would like to try my glutathione IVs. I know they can just really drain the inflammation out of my skin, but again, they tell me I need to stop breastfeeding and I don't want to stop breastfeeding. And she rang up an expert in Monash um, Hospital and asked him about it. He said, it's perfectly fine. Shelf life is two hours. Don't breastfeed for two hours. But beyond that, perfectly fine. Go for it. So what I did was I did my um, salt baths. I did my uh, IVs. I definitely kept with my diet. I never have swayed from my diet. I'm very diligent with it. I personally feel that that empowers me to keep myself healthy. So I didn't sway from it. So I just kept eating really healthy, just increased lots of green leafy vegetables, a lot of organic um, that my parents grow in their garden, drinking the liquid from the endives that they grow because that has lots of chlorophyll and it's anti-inflammatory. So doing all that um, within five weeks, my skin was normal again. So, you know, five weeks is a very short period of time to get resolution when you literally have become erythrodermic. And the doctor that I went to see to get the IVs from, he was actually unsure whether he would be able to help. And I said, he has to, because I don't, at this stage, I don't have anything else I can do to really settle it down. So long story short, basically I, I used a few different things and got myself better. Now, it, my son was born in, in the beginning of winter, so I couldn't go to the beach, but if this is something that you have accessible to you, I would definitely recommend going to the beach, a nice clean beach. Don't go if it's dirty because there's uh, obviously microbes and various things that can irritate your skin. A nice, beautiful, clean beach. Go in there and sit there for at least 30, 45 minutes to help with draining the inflammation out of your skin as well. Okay, so before I go ahead, I, I wanted to encourage you to create a checklist of what you're looking for, what you've tried, what you haven't tried, what has helped, what hasn't helped. Could you pinpoint why it did help? Could you pinpoint why it hasn't helped? Because sometimes, you know, deep down we know, you know, I know when I'd done previous diets in the past, I'd say, oh no, it didn't work, but I knew deep down I actually didn't do it properly. So if you can actually identify what the reasons are that you that you feel you didn't that didn't work then write them down if you don't know that's perfectly fine but if you do know that again is more information for you to to try and resolve it and then what are you willing to try keep yourself open that's one thing that my mother taught me was to really keep my uh, you know my awareness to what is around open and try everything and give it a go because you just never know when it's going to work. So what are you willing to try? And then um, have you combined any therapies? What were the results of combining? So I know a lady who swears black and blue that chiropractic helped her psoriasis. Uh, didn't have the same effect on me, but for her, it was fantastic. So, you know, it's one of those things I think it's important to pinpoint what you think can you can be beneficial for you and give it a go and again what ways can we eliminate inflammation from the body and what can we mix what therapies can we mix together to help us get um, further quicker because psoriasis is a very difficult disease i always find my eczema patients get better much quicker than my psoriasis patients 
which is sad because I know everything there is about psoriasis. And yet it's just the nature of the disease. It just takes time. And so um, by um, pooling together um, a couple or a few different modalities of health, that can potentially make things move a lot quicker for you. Okay, so as far as what treatments are around, um, like I said, make sure you find something that is eliminating inflammation. But the most important thing is, is identify why you think this started to begin with. Was it your emotions? Was it a virus? Was it you're born with it? So you've got no understanding why it's come about because that can also indicate which therapy might be beneficial for you. If you've got a, lo a lot of emotional uh, trauma, then kinesiology is something that I would recommend. Uh, if you have gutate, then you need to obviously get rid of the pathogens in the body and, and Chinese medicine is great for that, it can purge the pathogens out and I find that very beneficial. When you're talking about being born with it, we're talking about congenital essence and that's something in Chinese medicine we look at. So that's essentially the, the genetics that you've received from your parents, what deficiencies were there and how can you build that up to make yourself stronger. So uh, there, knowing where it came from can really help you identify which modality of health is suitable for you, but keep an open mind and try everything and be honest with yourself. Do it as, it's, as it recommends to a T so that you know whether it's helped you or not. Okay, so before I go, uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the Salubre Therapeutics trial packs we have recently launched. And it basically is a small, quantity of each of our five products in the range uh, working on scalp psoriasis and body uh, psoriasis and you can find more information on salubre.com.au on that and if you have any questions please let me know because it's one of those things that um, reaching out and finding out whatever you can to help yourself get better is really important to to resolving this and, and being on your journey to better health so Stay tuned for part five, our final part for the Psoriasis Unmasked series, which is topical treatments. Are they a cash cow or essential in the management of psoriatic disease? So stay tuned and I'll see you soon.